Hey everyone, uh, hope everyone's doing all right uh, during these uh, global pandemic times. Hope everyone's been drinking a lot of tea um, and following the public health recommendations in your area. Um, me personally, I have been also drinking um, a lot of tea. Uh, I worked from home before this and I continue to work from home. So my life may have been, um, uh, had a little bit less upheaval than others. Um, but it's nice to hear that people are drinking a lot of tea. Um, it's, uh, and I think some people have used this sort of a chance to sort of pick up uh, tea as a hobby. So if you're new, uh, welcome uh, to this channel. Um, there's a lot of different um, content here for you. But this is probably not the most beginner oriented episode, but um, one of the things that I've done in the pandemic is I have moved. Um, I have, uh, I live here in Seattle, Washington. I've lived here for pretty much my whole life. Um, so very familiar with this area, but I moved about, um, just a mile from my previous residence, uh, now I'm living in sort of a duplex situation. Um, and you might ask, why am I talking about this? Um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about sort of learning more about your own space as far as like a storage location. Um, and some things that I've been observing in my new, uh, my new home. Um, and so the place that I've been living. Uh, so yeah, going to be talking about those things. Uh, so, uh, the first thing to note is that, uh, uh, just, I just want to talk a little bit about how we describe storage. We tend to describe storage as dry storage or wet storage. And I've talked a little bit about those concepts in the past. But one thing that we really often do is we will attach the name of the location uh, to where you are storing tea. So no matter where I've lived throughout my whole life, if I stored my tea in my home, it would be considered Seattle storage. But depending on, but there's also, I think a lot more into it that ends up creating sort of the tea's final product. So things like methodology matters. If I store the tea right here versus store the tea in here, that could make a big difference. Or if I store my tea, which I do, uh, in this big thing, that makes an even different difference. Um, but a lot of it does end up getting um, determined sort of by your ambient conditions. Um, so if you are in the West, uh, which most of the people following this channel are, but you happen to live in a place that is unusually hot and humid compared to the rest of us, uh, then your your what you end up deciding as far as like what you want to do for storage could depend could vary quite a bit from that. Um, so one thing I, that I do do, and I've been doing this, uh, I've lived in three different locations uh, since I started TDV, um, is I uh, I have hygrometers um, everywhere. So this is uh, one that I've been using for quite a while, and I use these to both measure conditions in. Uh, my pumidors, but also outside of it, just to sort of learn uh, the ambient conditions. And I've had pretty much hygrometers in, this is a two bedroom duplex, so I've had it in a couple different rooms in here, including the living room as well as here. And you'll note that this area is a little bit different from the living room. It gets a little bit cooler here and it might be just a touch more humid. Uh, so uh, that's interesting to note. Um, one thing that uh, I've also noted is uh, just that this is pretty different from, or at least it's it's not pretty different, but it is, it is significantly different than my previous locations. I've lived here for a little bit more than a month, so I definitely don't have like the uh, sort of time. I don't exactly know what the conditions are going to be like here in December, for instance. I, I lived here since um, June. So, but I do have some idea of how this differs versus my previous areas. So the two previous places I lived, one was an apartment building where I lived on the sixth floor. Um, so it was a little higher. And the second one, uh, the more recent location was an apartment building where I lived on the second floor. Um, and one thing I noted there is that uh, it uh, compared to this location, both of them tended to be a little bit hotter. Uh, this is sort of, uh, this is kind of ground level. This is, I'd say like there's a basement beneath us, but we are, uh, I 
I guess slightly above that. So you have to go up like five stairs to get to this location. So it's a lot closer to ground level than the other ones. Um, and right now it's reading 56 uh, relative humidity. I'd say that's pretty typical for what I've measured in this space. Um, this would be uh, towards the very, very highest amount of humidity I would have measured in my two previous residences. It would just about never get this humid unless it was raining and I was like making soup or something like that. So this is, uh, now it's up to 58, and it sort of shows me the range here that has been between 53 to 61 in the last uh, relative period of time, and it switches from 70 to 75. So that would mean to me that maybe, uh, well, this location, of course, is a little bit more humid, so it might be a little bit more forgiving if I were to store a tea on uh, on the shelves or in something like this, where it's, you know, it's a contained space. Is it like the most vacuum sealed thing? Probably not. Um, so that's definitely something I'd recommend everyone do is get your hygrometer. There's only so much you can learn from looking at the climate, um, at the weather data in where you live. Uh, a lot depends on just how your living space is set up. Uh, are you on the ground floor? Are you higher? Uh, and sort of having this switch um, has re-emphasized those points to me just because I've moved a mile away and uh, it's pretty different, um, I gotta say. Um, and it does change my perspective a little bit on storage. Um, another example I'll mention is Garrett, who lives in about another mile from here. And I have always noted, because uh, he does the same thing that I do as another crazy poor storage person, is he keeps a hygrometer uh, just sort of in the ambient area where he lives. And he sort of lives in this uh, semi-basement sort of situation for those uh, parasite lovers. Great movie. Uh, so, uh, and I've always noted that his place is cooler and a little bit more humid than the spaces that I used to live in. So I think I've moved to an area that ends up being a little bit closer to sort of the conditions that he had. Uh, for instance, I would just about never get to 60 relative humidity here. Um, whereas at his location, I would often see it being 60 relative humidity uh, in both the summer and the, uh, and the wetter months in Seattle, which tend to be uh, winter and autumn. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think that's, uh, those are interesting things to look at for sure. Uh, um, so one, so I'd say overall, and just surely the context of poor storage, being a little bit more humid is helpful. It, may, it means you can maybe have a little bit of a lighter touch on uh, how you're storing tea in terms of injecting humidity and stuff like that. If my uh, ambient humidity here is something like 56 as it is now, uh, the amount of uh, aggression I need to do or recharging bovida packs or whatever doesn't need to be as much as if it was uh, 30 relative humidity or something that I would regularly measure in either of my two previous residences. Uh, so it just sort of reemphasizes to me that a lot of this just depends on sort of the situational hand that you are dealt. Uh, some people wonder how we can run through so few Boveda packs here in Seattle. And the answer is we don't do anything terribly special. It just happens to be a little bit more humid um, than maybe Los Angeles or something like that, where you're regularly running 30 to 35 ambient uh, relative humidity uh, in your space. Um, one last thing is on the negative side, it does seem to be just a little bit cooler here. Uh, and a lot has gone into sort of looking into the impacts of heat on poor, especially by uh, Marco, who has a great blog uh, on tea uh, and has especially done a lot of storage experiments on that. So I definitely recommend you check those out if you're interested. Um, it just then tends to run a little bit cooler here. So uh, there are definitely some pros and cons towards this. But I've been, I have been presently happy with um, the uh, RH here. Obviously, you don't want it to get to a condition that, you know, feels pretty uncomfortable. But for me, uh, the difference between living in 55 RH and uh, 40 RH is not very much, at least not that I can like discernibly notice. So yeah, uh, those are just a few thoughts of uh, how, uh, how you can sort of look at your ambient conditions. I mean, it's really not very complicated. Uh, you just get a hygrometer. I've had pretty good success just buying $10, $15 ones off of Amazon, uh, measuring your conditions there. 
Um, so yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you have a hychrometer and are measuring your uh, conditions in the room that you are considering storing poor in, or you are storing poor on, post it below. I'd be very curious to see what they are. Uh, I think just looking at climate data is really, really limiting. And this is a far more practical way of just looking at it and trying to figure out um, your storage alternatives. And if you're someone that's going to need to work really, really hard in order to get your poor to something like the 60 to 70 RH that mo most of us choose to try to get our poor to, or if you're someone that has, has to work a little bit easier um, and might be able to do uh, more reasonable things, uh, uh, not more reasonable things to have just a lighter hand, uh, and, uh, in, uh, in doing it. So thank you all for tuning in and I will see y'all next time.